hurricane, a tidal wave. It's imperfect, life looks brilliant, gives me more of this. I'm out of control, about to go, and I've been caught in the undertow. So toxic, but I can't get enough. like that it's thursday night you knew all what that means it's party time with the video bros i'm one half of that team i'm bobby munson and the man beside me he's the man with the angelic voice come on people sing with me papa smokes papa smokes happy thursday how are you doing brother happy thursday to you munson i'm doing great i'm here for ring respect radio we never miss a week we never miss an episode we're on quite a run here, Munson, and I'm loving it. We are on quite a run. I do have to give you a heads up, though. In uh, two weeks from tonight, Pop Smokes, I am going to be out of town on the road, so there's no promises that I will be able to make that episode. I might have to. I might have to give the old tag to to Ed Fries there if he'll hang with you one more Ooh. time here. Tag tag him in, bring him in as the uh, the guest host of that evening. If that, if you're good with that. Sounds good to me, man. And and didn't chaotic wrestling just have another event? Maybe we could get more of that. And they just like the SPW, I'm kind of hooked now. I kind of like what they got going on. So I want to watch some more. No promises, but maybe me and Ed could do that. That'd be fun. Exactly. And you know what? I mean, even the narrative of tonight's show is about kind of our favorite indie moments or in favorite indie stuff, especially the stuff we've been a part of. And speaking of being a part of the indie scene, you know, this guy, whether he's on the side of the fence with yeah. us or on the other side as a fan, he's a bro for life. It's Basser up in the house Thursday night with the boys. Basser, cheers to you. Woo. Thank you for joining the most random episode of Ring Respect Radio that we have done <laughs> in a long time. Basser will join Papa. Well, I, I would have to teach one of you boys how to produce a uh, a show for the night. If I did that, I'd have to give out some credentials and producer i i mean i could see if maybe we could get a party with you the two of you and ed together or well something like okay that. yeah I think we could yeah. do that because then uh, i could get ed there either ed or andre andre might be available too andre is another yep. option that can produce yep. uh so again i'll talk to them see what see what's up see what's up for the indie scene and we can bring that right here to that thursday night and again we'll we'll see i mean i'll have my equipment with me it's just a matter of how, how strong the internet connection is and where we are at at the time when I'm on the road like that out of town. So I will, uh, I'll be a last minute decision whether or not I can make it, but I will try to make sure we've got somebody here with you, Papa Spokes. Uh, we got it. One. Yeah, we got it. No problem. Uh, take the time you need, Munson. And uh, let's just remind everybody we're talking about in two weeks, but in one week, we have a significant episode coming out. That I'm looking very much forward to. I've started some research. I'm going to do a whole bunch more. But you know we're going to take that trip through the territories next week. And I'm loving this. Yeah. And again, this one uh, th definitely going to be a different direction for us. We're not going with one of the bigger name territories this time. We're going for a little bit of a lesser known one. So we can uh, dig deep into something a few people might not know much about. So come and 
learn with the video bros one week from tonight. We still want you to grab your beers, have your have your fun. You know how it is. You know Mr. Cannabis Kelly and his, you know, take care of business. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> Ambassador says, sign me up. I love Ed. Everyone loves Ed. I'll get you all. Yeah, yeah. Hell of a guy. Um, but yeah, no, Papa Smokes, we're talking all about indep- independent wrestling here tonight. Of course, you and I, anybody who hasn't seen the show before, if you're watching on replay, again, subscribe, notification bell, thumbs up the video, give us a comment in the comment section. If you don't know already, Papa Smokes and I work in the independent scene. Uh, we are behind the camera for Prairie Pro Wrestling, previously for High Impact Wrestling. Uh, we also are the commentary team that you hear every single week, every Saturday afternoon for new matches on Prairie Pro Wrestling. We were also the commentary team for Wildside TV that could be still be found over on High Impact Wrestling's YouTube channel as well, too. So the whole catalog of work that we have had in the independent scene so far, Papa Spokes, is available out there today. It has been around for quite some time, doing the math on it. You know, it's a it's about seven ish years just teetering around there that we've been involved. And speaking of Ed, there he is. Hey, oh, troublemakers. Yeah. Hey, Ed. Ed, uh, we can chat afterwards or or sometime soon. But in a, two weeks' time, I don't know that I'm going to be available for a Thursday. Wanted to see if you can uh, set something up here to take over Ring Respect Radio with Papa Spokes and potentially Bass or do maybe a, another chaotic episode, so to speak. Let me know. Um, but. Yeah, Pop Smokes, I want to I want to start by saying like your first experience behind the camera, I guess, came about in Prairie Pro Wrestling. But in terms of the yeah. commentary, it was much deeper than that because we go back to that time when we decided to go ahead with Wildside TV. We filmed that battle royal and put that out with that was the winner of that battle royal getting a shot at Cody Rhodes at the big uh, HIW event that was coming up at the Sutherland Hall. Uh, when Cody had just recently left the WWE, was starting to work the independence before the existence of AEW even happened. And we know that Michael Allen and Richard Clark went on to win that, and we got that big match over at that big event. And crazy enough, as cool as that experience is, and I mean, that'll always hold a special place. We got to, I got to work the camera in a Cody Rhodes match. We got to call a Cody Rhodes match. The match of that night, surprisingly, actually, for me, was a match between Jeff Tyler and El Asesino. Oh, yeah, I like your pick, Munson. And, and I was thinking about this topic. My mind, of course, went back to that special, special night known as Battle Arts in the larger venue than uh, what those uh, that company and our company normally use. So really had all the, all the wrestling fans in this Saskatoon area. Some people drove from two hours out, three hours out and more because... As you said, Cody Rhodes had already left WWE, but the buzz for AEW was already well underway. They were probably a year, a little less than a year to starting, but everybody knew Cody was starting a company with the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. And if you're someone that likes that sort of thing, I guess you're going to like that. And it was had a huge buzz going. And yeah, that evening was packed. It was fun. You and I were still quite new to the commentary game at that point, so there was, of course, Very a lot of nervousness and everything. That was for sure the most I've ever prepped for a show. I think I had five pages of notes for for uh, Michael Allen, Richard Clark versus Cody Rhodes, and I had even more than that for the match you're talking about, El Asesino versus Jeff Tyler, because we had been watching that feud go on for years and years and years, not constantly, but those two never liked each other, were always rivals. And this was, you had the feeling it was going to be the big and final match in that series of which they had both traded victories. Uh, and it was for, of course, the uh, provincial title at that time, the big title in high impact wrestling so man this match had all kinds of story all kinds of build up and yeah what a thrill it was to call it what are some of your memories Munson yeah like I mean of course there was that I mean mine goes even to like the time that I decided to take a a training camp with the guys I've been to a few of the the camps along the way and some of the training sessions along the way and stuff but going to that very first one 
and being as big a mark as I was at the time, you know, you, you get it in your mind, you know this, you know that, you know better than this. And you walk in there and get tuned in faster than you can ever understand it. I'm glad that I had the the willpower to push through it, but there's not a lot to do. Classes usually start with a lot of hopefuls, a lot of hopefuls. Classes dwindle down to a very fine few by the end. And the worst part is, in all of that, is that the longer and deeper in you go, the more fatigued you are, but the harder it becomes because they don't have a mercy button for when there's less people and you have to take more bumps or there's less people and you have to run more cardio or anything like that. No, they are trying to find a way to physically break you, physically and mentally break you down to see if you'll crack. Because again, when you're being trusted with somebody else's life, inside of a professional wrestling ring, as well as your own, you better be able to mentally and physically be prepared to be inside that ring and everything like that. So I look back on it with fondness, despite the fact that it, it was much like military training at times when I had some of the boys literally in my ear screaming at me and just the thing, I won't repeat some of the things that were being screamed in my ear that night, but there was a lot being screamed at me. And all I could think was, I can't give up in front of all of these wrestlers right now. There is no way in hell I am going to stop myself and end this here tonight. And I pushed through. I pushed through the whole two damn hours of this thing, right through to the chest chops. And I remember lining up for chest chops thinking, no biggie. I'm already so freaking tired. This can't possibly do a damn thing. And we get that first one in there and smack. And I'm like, son of a bitch, that hurt. And then the second one hits. And it, phew, that didn't feel any better. And you're going through this thing. And you think by number 19, eh, I'm so numb to it. You couldn't possibly hit me with anything harder from that. Then El Asino took his shot. Damn it, Papa Smokes. I still, to this day, feel it. When I see El Asino rock somebody with those chops inside a ring, I'm feeling it right there right there every single time <laughs> use the word to, my childhood hero john my childhood hero are you kidding me ed we're the same damn age my friend like damn ch 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 i could have had children in the childhood john cena era jesus christ but yes he does have a good philosophy would never give up i'll give him that well and that obviously uh, uh benefited you during the training sessions too and i think that's part of the idea is too is that to train wrestlers hard so that the real life situation it's not as hard as that hopefully but you have to be ready if it is and we've all seen shows where you know the the, the arrangements don't go as as planned and and somebody doesn't show up and a couple people don't make it and somebody else can't make it now you might have to do two matches now you might have to be job guy for three matches you never really know so you have to plan for the worst and i think that's what some of those grueling sessions were about i didn't do the formal mini camps like you munson but i was there for when the uh, ring used to be in a certain trainer's backyard and uh, the bumps and the yells and the choking and the screaming were done out there quite a good time and uh, yep. some stuff was being done I can't, uh, I'm sure that fans probably realize this, but once you get in there, it is not like it looks on TV. You can't just imagine it and it's done. It's very, very difficult and a different style than a lot of other fighting styles. Even if you have martial arts experience, it's a whole different thing with timing and working with your opponent. It's nothing to sneer at, man. And I respect all the workers in the business that have gone through that rigorous training with a good trainer at a good training school and have come out on the other side and make money in our business. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Ed coming up with this saying, well, he is our truth's childhood hero and our truth is older than Papa Smokes. I don't know. I don't uh, Hold on here. Is our truth older than Papa Smokes? That sounds like a good segment for the Oh, they're just <laughs> numbers at this point, but we're in the same decade. I guarantee that. 
Yeah, that 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 we can confirm. Uh, Bowser saying, hey, Bobby, has Papa seen the video yet of yes. Colton cleaning my clock with the belt? Um, of course. Well, according to the PPW YouTube short videos there, Bowser, there's at least uh, six or 700 or whenever I last checked people that have definitely seen it. I know on Instagram, over a thousand people have seen it. So it's if one or two people have noticed you getting your clock clean. But for those who haven't, I could play said video here for you. I, I think that would be an okay right a- idea. What do you think, Pops, folks? Well, since we brought it up, let's do it. It doesn't take long. All right. Well, I will head on over and find this for <laughs> us so that we can get that geared up. I mean, it it is worth the chuckle. Let's let's not kid ourselves. If, if this would have happened to any random fan at one of the shows, like just saying anybody else, and I agree with how Cole Kelly approached Bass or brought this up that, he was he felt better that it happened to Bass only because you know Bass isn't going to get mad about it. You're not gonna have yeah, someone be like, oh, I got fucked up by a wrestler at a show. And if Bass got fucked up, well, like dude, he got fucked up bad, man. <laughs> uh says so he's saying, I'm walking through co-op, smiling my ass off. <laughs> Fantastic, man. That's awesome. All right. Well, he's got his own short now that's doing well. That's so awesome. What yeah. a tantalizing title, too. When you see a short and it's someone getting their clock cleaned, you got to click on that. Oh, 100%. No doubt about it. Uh, here we go. Share a screen. I don't know if we're going to... Hopefully, we'll get audio out of this thing. Let's see here. There we go. Bowser gets clocked in the face. And we're going to turn this up so everyone can hear it. It's very short, but here we go. <laughs> Oh. Oh. oh! oh! In the face! In the face! No! <laughs> oh man, I love that Beautiful. video. Yeah. Oh, Bassard is now going to be the target of getting blasted by all the heels at BPW. <laughs> Bass has now taken the two best injuries of any fan in Saskatoon wrestling that I know of. Anyway, um, have from having the the nose situation to the big bruise on his leg, and then allowing me that chest chop in the parking lot that was followed up by the uh, drunken uh, drunken cowgirl that uh, slapped him almost a little below the belt that night. Bass is taking a beating here for PPW. <laughs> tremendous. Yes, it is tremendous. Bass, it is funny. Bass can handle it. I have all feet in him. Yep. In that in that very matchup, in fact, too, that's not the only person to get in the face with the bell. In fact, Shiki hits Crash Crimson in the face twice, busted Crash open. But, man, Basser got busted the hard way that goddamn night. He sure, wow. Yeah, and... and- he also wasn't the only fan to uh, get some physicality from a wrestler that Ooh. night. Too. I'm not even <laughs> going to go into too much detail about that for uh, various reasons, but wow. And it's Shoot. all... Oh, sorry. Don't puff, don't puff up on a big heel when you're in the crowd and expect him to walk away because it looks bad if he walks away. Just a little note to you fans. You might think it's funny. You might want a little bit of the spotlight, but watch out. Some of those guys will not walk away with you hurling abuse at them and get it thinking you're going to get away with it. No, exactly. And the moment you're talking about, everyone's going to be able to see when the match comes out. It's going to be a little bit from now, obviously. We're probably looking at into September before that one officially comes out. But I have got all the editing done, Papa Smokes. All the matches from uh, the most recent show have been fully edited. As you know, you and I called the first two tonight. So those will be coming up on the YouTube channel towards the end of July here, uh, leading into August. So even by the next time that PPW is live in Saskatoon, we'll be about halfway through the tapings from the previous show there. So we are getting kind of close to being caught up there with our Saturday afternoon matchup. So we are going to have to pivot here eventually and come up with some new material to deliver to the PPW Nation. And if anyone's curious about the incident, we're talking about what it actually looked like is... uh... You might have seen that clip from the 80s of uh, a fan getting in Kamala's face and uh, Kamala's reaction to that, which uh, caused various large lawsuits. And I'm sure he got in trouble from Vince with that. But uh, 
a fan never considered doing that again. <laughs> no, no, don't tangle with the boys unless you want to find out because you'll find out the hard way. And uh, yeah, and and poor Bass finds out the hard way without even having to be in the face. Like he's not even the bad guy out there. He's not the one hurling shit. He's oh. the one having fun and making. He loves and Colton. He's loves cheering Colton. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh so here and i will say it too to anybody who's curious the reason that happened is we had some really shitty mats because we couldn't get our regular mats there that evening we had some really shitty soft mats that the boys weren't used to they were easy to trip on very difficult to walk across so it wasn't the only time we had an incident where somebody tripped up that night Matt, uh reed matthews did as well too there was no avoiding it it was just well not the greatest to work on to begin with I was struggling even, you know, with where I was at there kind of thing with moving around with the camera and stuff like that, trying to navigate those things. That's, I think I was going to try to give Colton or try to hug Colton. I'm not sure. You looked like you were, you were hanging what? right over the rail and just dangling right over and just boof. And that title right up in the bridge of the nose. Jesus. I'm starting to think it might've been deliberate. <laughs> Colton's like, no hugs, man. Colton, just, Colton didn't want to hug. <laughs> He was in a he was in a crusty mood already before the match even started. Like fuck, yeah, no, oh, not happening. <laughs> Maybe it's the Colton heel turn. Oh, we're not going to talk about that. Holy shit! Oh man, pop smokes. Uh, speaking of uh, like our favorite independent moments too, I want to go back because this was kind of brought up recently in my memory because I believe it was Curtis Anderson who's uh, been a PPW supporter for quite a few years. Uh, over on his Facebook channel or Facebook page, uh, had reposted a clip from the finals of the PPW Food Truck Wars tournament and asked, was this the very first PPW show? To which I replied, it was the third of a series, which was our official debut. We actually, that was the Saturday night event on that particular one that he was posting, but we had done Thursday and Friday as well too. The Food Truck Wars had hired Prairie Pro Wrestling before we even made our official Saskatoon indoor debut to do three outdoor showings that were free of charge to anybody come. So we had some massive crowds there that were checking out PPW before we even officially started selling tickets for the very first time. Man, what an experience to be able to do that in such a large area, large crowd. A lot of fun that was had there as well, too. We got introduced to some new names that we had never worked with before prior in HIW. We got to have back some of the ones that we had worked with prior in HIW that we knew we were going to be working with. And then just to see the evolution of PPW from there and who's come in, who is stuck around and stuff like that. And the new faces that have come about in that time frame has just been an absolute amazing experience for me. And I always think back to the food truck wars, those very first moments, those nervous moments of not knowing what we were getting ourselves into. Was this going to work? I had the utmost faith, the faith that it would, but you still have those nerves going into it with that not sure. No, you said it just right. It, it was the culmination of so many thoughts and so many dreams and so many discussions that we all had together about was this viable, was this doable, and, and I think we none of us ever really questioned whether we could or not. It was just a matter of getting funds together, getting support together, and seeing uh, uh, who we could book and who we couldn't and all that stuff, and then yeah, the food truck wars came up. It wasn't probably the way we were thinking of launching it, but this opportunity came up, and it was it was golden in the middle of July, where it's when the weather is finally really nice here, kind of like it is right now. It's really hot here right now, oh, by the way. Is it ever? Oh, and humid. But this was a nice weekend in July. Sunny skies. Everybody year after especially after the long winters everybody wants to get out so uh, an outdoor downtown event like the food truck wars is heavily attended and we got in with the uh, bartari beer gardens there one of the former sponsors of ppw yep. he got us a gig <clears throat> setting up the our brand spank a new ring outside and like you said seeing who's going to work with us it had been pretty much a full year since High Impact Wrestling had stopped running shows, and um, the the audience was was starving for for local indie wrestling product. 
they wanted to see their favorites as well. But as we discovered, we were to work with some new people and some old favorites as well. And that, that'll always be a special weekend to me too. <clears throat> Munson, I'm sure you've looked at, there's that nice picture of, of all the workers standing in front of the ring, just perfect historical document of who was there and who, who wasn't. And then don't forget, we also have a nice picture <clears throat> of you and I in Bartari afterwards having a beer. That's a special picture for me too, because that's a historical document documentation of the video bros in semi early form, but also transitional form from the previous company to thinking of that whole year of how we were going to help set up Prairie Pro Wrestling. And then, ah, the fruition that night, doing the whole show, checking it all out, getting a feel for what it was like, and then going for a beer and talking about it afterwards. An important part of the whole show, I think, having that beer afterwards and discussing what was good, what could we do differently, what would we do again, what wouldn't we do again, and, of course, having a game of WrestleFest, at which I kicked your ass months, Yo, if you, you remember me. correctly. Murder and me. we got that we got that awesome picture. We should post that since we've talked about it because it's quite a nice picture with the lights in the background and everything. Yeah, yes. that'll always be one of my big memories. Actually, you know what? While we're talking about it, I'm actually going to go and try to uh, look that up here, Papa Smokes. I'm sure that that's got to be on my ex account here at some point in time. I'm sure it won't be too hard to navigate, but as we're talking about it, yeah, it was a, it was a magical moment because we went there after the Saturday, so we had done all three shows at this point in time. We had the 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 local news was down there to do it. They did an interview yeah. with Mitch Danger Zone Clark, uh, who made his debut there in Saskatoon, originally from Saskatoon. Now had been operating out of Edmonton, but he is a UFC guy turned professional wrestler. Came down, we didn't know anything about him coming in. Hell of a dude. Man, he's moved yes. on to some big stuff. I don't know if you've noticed that Mitch Clark now a part of a commentary team that actually calling MMA fights. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. He's intelligent and well-spoken, a really good guy. I'd like to listen to more of it because I bet you he's really good. Oh, he's great. Yeah, no, and, uh, you know, big shout out to Mitch uh, Mitch Clark. Always been a yeah. big supporter of us, and we're a big supporter of him as well, too, and Great yeah, guy. that was a, one of the many names. And again, here, here's the thing. Like, we've seen since then, Sheik Akbar Shabazz has gone on to now be two-time Prairie Pro Wrestling Champion, whether you want to acknowledge it or not. Uh, the longest reigning PPW Champion in history. You can't deny that, especially now. Um, he's gone on to those big things. Look what happened with Zoe Zegger. Zoe Zegger came in young, fresh, new to professional wrestling. We knew nothing about her, but she was a ball of energy that the crowd was excited about, happy to see and stuff like that. And man, ever since then, Zoe Zegger has accelerated her in-ring ability. She has gotten better and better and better by the minute. And now this newfound attitude and everything that she has adapted and knowing that confidence that she has had since we saw her first enter the Food Truck Wars tournament. Wow. Just absolutely wow. Because Zoe Sager is on fire right now. One of the most dangerous, dangerous wrestlers that we have in Prairie Pro Wrestling. As uh, Ed Payne, big uh, big respects to Sheiky. Ed, Ed is a Sheik yeah. fan, two-time Sheiky. Yeah. 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 I bet Ed likes the Sheik. He's got good taste in wrestlers. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's, you interesting. Know. it's interesting the points you make about Zoe Sager, too, and I, I couldn't agree with you more because... She always looked pretty good. She started, and she, she has a good look, and she did the moves in the ring quite well. I don't think she completely understood how to work, which is, there's no shame in that when you first start. Every wrestler has to go through growing pains and, and discover the way that you do the moves in the ring, but you have to work them to the crowd. And you could see... Zoe was shy, a little bit reserved, didn't really interact with the crowd or the ref or anybody else except for her opponent physically in the ring. But look at her now. She's come along so well. 
and she's letting us see some of her inner personality, some of her feelings, and some of the way that she knows she can sell a story and help tell a story in the ring, not just with moves, but with facial expressions. She yells stuff at the crowd now. They love it. They love the interaction. And you can see that she loves it now, too. Just very happy and glad to see the improvement. And you must maybe feel a little bit like I do, Munson, when you see Zoe Sager working for big companies in Vancouver, getting dark matches on AEW's TV and all the accomplishments she's done. We used to watch her when she was first starting, right? Like, it, it makes me feel a little bit of pride. Not that I helped her in any way or not, not trying to make it sound like that, but someone you saw at the very beginning and then have watched get better and better, start to realize their dreams. It's awesome. It's a great feeling. 100% it is. And uh, you'll be happy to know in that time, Papa Smokes, I was able to find a picture here that I'm going to be able to share with everybody. So I have yeah. found said picture. Also kind of as I was scrolling back through images, I also found a very, very old picture that was taken on a old Polaroid camera of myself back in my teenage years. Uh, that I will also share with everybody just for the fun of it anyway. But this is the picture in question that we're talking about from Bar Target. Yeah, yeah. Papa Smokes absolutely annihilated me at WrestleFest, but we had a great time drinking beers, shooting shots of wild turkey that evening. We tied one on pretty yeah. easily. Uh, definitely one of our – it was one of our top moments. Uh, definitely not our – not the drunkest I've been when we've been out for drinks, oh. but – you know that uh, nothing's gonna quite top my 40th birthday, though. So I mean, there's that. That was good, and that's when we went to uh, Off Broadway Amigos there too, and uh, they always roll out the red carpet for some cool wrestling guys like us. We had <laughs> some of your buddies from work and a few other people there too, and that, that was a totally good night, and uh, we rocked it pretty good. We also had another good one after one of the PPW shows at that same bar where uh, there was loud music playing and we had guests in from out of town and there was all kinds of chicanery going on. And, and that, that was also a good memory for me too. Oh, it was a fantastic memory. And speaking of memories, I'm going to share this for the fun of it. There's teenage Bobby about, <laughs> about 14 or 15 years old right there, I think I was. Uh, so just in my teenage years, jamming on my bass guitar, you know, the good old days. But uh, the, beauty. the good old days before I learned what intoxicants were. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, no, it just it's it's fun to look back on some of that stuff and even to relive the memories of what brought us to where we are with what we do. And, you know, we talked so heavily about the moment when Sheik finally lost the belt and Colton Kelly got it. Now magical that was like one of our top top moments in our professional wrestling careers. You know, it's it's been quite the journey to be able to say we've called the matches for the people we have and to see, like you say, not just Zoe, but a lot of the people we've called matches for and to see them accelerate and get moments on TV. I thought it was absolutely amazing. And a quick shout out to the Honor Ramble coming up after us here. That one night on Honor Ramble, they were talking about a match that happened. And one of the workers in the matchup was Kat Von Hees. And I was like, or, seriously, I was like, well, congratulations. I'm like, I, I know who Kat Von Hees is. In fact, called many a Kat Von Hees matches over our time yeah. and everything. So I was able to give them a little bit of background on who Kat was. But it's, again, one of those things where awesome to see that opportunity. I know for a fact, uh, Sean Moore and Michael Allen, Richard Clark, I believe, are on a taped version of AEW Collision coming up this weekend as well, too, in a trios matchup. Oh, nice. And I love to see those guys get their opportunity. Um, even just personally, you know, like if you think if you had any goals as a wrestler, one of them might be to get on major TV in any way, shape, or form, be it a match or be it you're one of the security guards in the background. It's a pretty big deal, man, to get on one of those big company shows, and it's going to just tickle those guys a lot. And Man, all of us fans just love to see that when Raw comes, Raw or AEW comes to Winnipeg or Edmonton or Calgary or Saskatoon and see our guys in the background helping out with the show, 
it's nice that the companies invite the local workers here come and help us we got a spot for you get some experience soak in what it's like backstage and all that stuff marvelous and and it goes to show we've talked about wrestling community before it's it's not just on a local level but workers at all level are part of a community and a lot of them know each other and a lot of them respect each other and just can't tip my hat uh, enough to the guys that get to uh, live their dream and, and get on TV. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And again, like, like I said, you know, shout out to both Sean Moore and Michael Allen, Richard Clark, I believe their second yes. appearance now uh, coming up for AEW. And the fact that this one's actually, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, taped for collision. So this isn't like AEW dark, like they appeared before. This is an actual national broadcast. So big congratulations to the, both those guys who we've known for quite a few years uh, and they've seen the the growth they've had in as well too. So congratulations to them getting that opportunity. I know Levi Knight, who's regularly with us, recently did a work for Ring of Honor as well too. So he's had some chances to be out there on, on television as well. So we're seeing a lot more of it happen. A lot more of the wrestlers that we find here in our, our neck of the woods are getting more and more opportunities as these companies are rolling through and doing these different spots and stuff like that. There seems to be a, a world of opportunity there for them as long as they're willing to work for it. And that's the thing. There's some of the hardest damn workers here in Western Canada that are willing to fight for that opportunity and earn that opportunity to go and take those spots anytime they can. And, and as veterans always say, if you're well, if you're well trained, and you have a work ethic and you can get into the business and start working, you're closer to your dreams than you think because it is a community and people know each other and everybody knows each other. And nowadays with the internet, you don't got to send your tapes to companies or anything like that. It's right there at the click of a mouse or the, the press of a smart screen. It's right there. So your stuff is closer to the, your dreams than you think and it, it's wild the way it works yeah and that's i mean that's one of the things that i really love about this is that we're also in the meantime getting to help these wrestlers grow with their identity on line right now too like again you know the opportunities that are there for your riley cruises your morris waltzes and all these young names that are coming up through the business that when some of the some of the ones that have got the bigger name for them right now didn't necessarily have that easy opportunity for material to be uploaded to platforms like youtube and twitch and stuff like that that's changed that whole mindset is completely changed and everybody is uploading just about everything that is out there now so you're getting more of that chance to get your name out there to get the things working in your favor and i i love to see that i, I loved seeing at the last show not only was riley cruz starting to get more opportunity but he's actually now pushed into the merchandise Riley Cruz has got official Riley Cruz guitar picks. He's got autograph pictures that he'll autograph for you. And he was selling stuff, Pop Smokes. Man, the kids love Riley Cruz. They think he's the great up-and-coming star, and he is. And he's got the merch. And I even said to him, I took him aside. I said, Riley, man, I got to congratulate you. This is smart business. Very smart business. You are doing something that not as many wrestlers are doing and should be doing more of. And that is marketing yourself. Put that shit out there because people of these shows want to spend money. They want to get merchandise from their favorites. And you are smart at, at your age to be doing this already. Yeah, couldn't agree more with you. And just kind of like the whole art of wrestling and the in-ring and the promos and all that. It's a process you have to learn, I think, as well. I'm no expert at this either, but I still feel like you can gain experience in selling yourself in getting yourself out there and in doing merch sales designs printing all that stuff get doing it now because then once you get some more momentum you're you know how to get your shirts out there you know how to get your pictures and it's a whole process if you can get that part mastered and smoothed out then you can start moving some products the fans will love it too, and uh, like you, like you said, people wanting autographed pictures and stuff doesn't surprise me because Riley Cruz, local talent, local boy, he's the kind of wrestler you could look at and think, "Wow, I like that guy. I'd like to be that guy. I'd like to be a wrestler like that guy." 
So little kids look up to a dude like that. He uh, follows the rules in the ring. He's not a he's not a jerk. He's not a he's not a guy that's uh, gonna cheat someone out of a victory or anything like that. He plays by the rules and he succeeds by his skill in the wrestling ring. That's something for kids to look up to, and I'm not surprised by his popularity in Saskatoon. Yeah, and I love the fact that he went with the guitar picks. I think that is such a great. Perfect gimmicky merchandise item to be selling and such an easy item to sell too because you're not asking yeah. 25, 30, 40 bucks for a t shirt. You're talking about a set of guitar picks for like five bucks. And man, I'm sure he's making a decent amount on it. And so he should be, but they're Riley Cruz branded guitar picks for the, for the young ones or whoever. I mean, shit, you're a guitar player and you like Riley Cruz, you might just pick one up anyway. Like, I, I thought, hey, I had I had cash in my pocket. I might have just grabbed myself some Riley Cruz guitar picks myself, even. Absolutely. And and if you like Riley Cruz, you probably like that head banging, thrashing, heavy metal music yeah. like Riley Cruz. Just like Munson likes, just like I like coming out to some good thrashing metal. You need the guitar picks. It's perfect for him. If you could only play guitar with those as good as Riley Cruz swings the crazy hair around. Boy, he makes a real impression when he gets in there. I still remember his first entrance months, and I didn't know him really yet, or I didn't know what he was going to be like in the ring. All of a sudden, Metallica's Ride the Lightning starts blasting <laughs> at high volume. I film his entrance. He sprints by me, practically knocks me out of the way. He's on the ring steps, smashing them and banging his head so hard that I was like, my God, this is awesome. And just that's that enthusiasm and that youthful energy that he brings. Tying it with heavy metal is just absolutely perfect. And all the people in the crowd love that headbanger or not. You can't deny the energy it brings. No, I mean, Riley's fantastic. And and so are a lot of the people we come across. Well, too, I'm using him as an example, but I mean, the, you know, the Short Kings have come a long way. They're selling shirts like crazy at the shows. And oh, yeah. shout out to our boys, the Short Kings. Um, but again, knowing to market themselves. They know that right now is a good time. People are into the Short Kings. They like the podcast. They like the tag team. They think these guys are fun. They're great. And they are. They are real, extremely yeah. great. Uh, so they're smart to be merchandising. Uh, I wish we had... That's the one thing I do wish is we wish we had a better area to set up the merchandise areas for the wrestlers. I think that is one drawback is them only being able to do the at ringside during intermission. If they actually had a table somewhere where they could set up would be a little bit more, a little bit better for them, especially with people walking back and forth. Like if they could have something in that hallway near the wash, uh, like on the way to the washroom, you think about how many drunk people on their way back. Oh shit. I got five bucks here. They go, what more merch sales would happen? I'm sure of that. Yeah, I, I love the idea, Bunsen, but you know why it's not <laughs> happening. It's oh, I know. There ain't any room in there. No. There's absolutely no extra room. And you and I have, have batted around the idea of doing live commentary there and doing a live stream. Where are we going to go, Bunsen? There's just no room there. And uh, we'd really have to juggle things around a little bit. But to me, it's more important to have more fans in there that want to see the product than mm -hmm. our little bells and whistles, I suppose. So, yeah, mm -hmm. let's just make room for more humanoids, more fans in the stands there. But, uh, yeah, there ain't any goddamn room in there left. There's only two things I could potentially think of for live commentary in that, in that place if it were to happen. And one would have to be setting up a new kind of a part to the ramp kind of thing like just beside the ramp where they come out yeah having the section that kind of went backwards a little bit with the drape still there so you can't see into the back room but it would have a desk for us to sit at to be able to monitor and call the live commentary from there otherwise it would probably have to be the table down near the ring bell which is already tight enough especially with the boys flying over the fucking ropes all the time and that would be yeah. chaotic and i don't know I about that one i also fear if we were to do it live and you're calling it live and we're the problem is if we were to go live, you gotta worry about I can edit audio when I do the pre pre-dos on YouTube at the moment. 
I can't edit the live audio to keep the fucking crowd noise out of the ears of the the rest of the world. And I really don't know that we want to run the risk of the rest of the world hearing the way Saskatchewan people talk sometimes. You make a strong point there, Munson. It would be uh, very difficult to uh, censor some of the more uh, abusive, or I don't even mean to say it that meanly. It's just heckling that goes, well, walks the line a little bit, maybe goes over the line it, quite a bit sometimes. Sometimes a I know you it draws it back on. a little further. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, they're bad on my side uh, next to those party sections too trust me uh, I, I hear some stuff too yeah there's there's logistical problems in doing uh, live commentary i'm not sure but uh, it's fun to think about and it's i i think we could totally do it as commentators i don't think i'd be uh, intimidated by the idea of doing it live we we do a pretty loose commentary as it is sometimes i mean it's not like it's uh, we have to have a complete script or planned out, or we don't have Vince in the earpiece or anything like that. So tell him more about his pets, pal. <laughs> you know, some kind of a person in your ear like that. I, I don't worry about that. It's just uh, the logistics of where we would go live. Yeah, we'd have to be up on the stage or near the stage somewhere. But once again, there ain't much room on the stage either. You've been in that dressing room lately where the boys get changed. There ain't a lot of room in there either. In no. fact, very little. So yeah, we got we got some ciphering and some thinking to do before we get that one going. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, they we already had to give up some of the space in there to make the VIP room for uh, any time the lady wrestlers are in town and stuff like that because yeah, yeah, that's the proper way to do things. Don't be a jerk. Um, yes. But yeah, so that's just the way it is i mean yeah you're right it's it's gonna be tough for us to ever go down that path we'd also have to find proper video bros for ringside here papa smokes to be able to take over the cameras yeah. before we could consider something of that magnitude and there ain't a whole lot of volunteers up in the saskatoon area for wanting to get yeah. down dirty with the cameras at ringside i'll tell you that much yeah that, that would be nice and and even the idea that uh I like to watch the show and digest it a little bit. So I'll start thinking of commentary when I'm watching it live. I don't really do that when I'm doing camera work because I got a lot of other things to think about. Partly is six foot three, 250 pound men toppling over the top <laughs> rope on me. That's, that's pretty forefront in my mind while I'm doing camera work. Uh -huh. Another big one is get the damn shot. Another big one is stay out of the damn way. Yeah, I got I got a lot of thoughts on my mind, uh, <laughs> other than other than what I'm going to say for commentary. So I mean, yeah, there, there's all that, but still on this topic, I I you and I have have spoken off camera millions of times about PPW and some ideas and stuff like that. I still like the idea of doing one large show per year at the larger venue and you know the one i'm talking about yep. which would be perfect is the the curling club out in sutherland it's quite big but i think if you did it once a year we could pack that thing and, and get the the same madness out of our fans the same intimacy the same volume level and all that the same energy level doing it once a year the big venue now we would have tons of room for a commentary table in that place. Tons of room for the merch tables that you were suggesting. Mm -hmm. Sponsors could have tables. We could have food, booze, promotion, all everything we want in there. But I say do it once a year. Live bands. You know, like EPW <laughs> Mania. Yeah, yeah. And we could do it up big. That's my little pipe dream of what I'd like to do. Yeah, and I mean, I know I've had bands already approaching me and talking to me. They would die for the opportunity for us to throw a big show and do either the night before or, you know, right afterwards or however we decided to do it where we had a live mm -hmm. music performance at some point in time to also bring in that extra revenue to give give everybody a different experience. So like maybe it's a weekend pass. You get Friday night with the four bands or whatever, 
then that's the 19 plus portion of the show or something. The next day it's all ages, big PPW show of the year. And we, you know, do all that we can to just jazz it up like we used to and stuff like that to really make a big deal out of it and get everybody we possibly can out to a show. Hell, at that point, we'll probably have more people at our show live than what AEW had when they came through Saskatoon. <laughs> Oh, that might sorry, be sorry, AW. You didn't have very many people. Yeah, that might not be saying too much, but the enthusiasm would be awesome, especially if we could again do it like a mania, do it like a big show, build everything up to be this is the Super Bowl of PPW now on this weekend in the spring, in the fall, whenever a nice time when everybody's around and just do it up. Big time. That would be awesome. Maybe get a you know, get a guest in, get a get somebody that's known in the business already, all that kind of stuff. And I like your suggestion of bands. You know, my favorite band, Savage Henry, would be all about that. Those yep. guys are big wrestling fans and a very excellent local band. I could see them playing there. I could say a number of other bands, including another one we know off the top rope. Wrestle Rock, as they like to be known. Yeah, my they've friend, got a song. They've got a friend. song called oh, "Super Kick to Death." Yeah, that might be uh, quite fitting for a weekend of wrestling and all that stuff. I love this. And uh, again, we already talked about wrestling community. This is a way for us to come together. Let's not just do the wrestling shows. Let's do other stuff and get to know each other. The fans, the workers, the boys, the community. Everybody, let's eat together. Let's watch the wrestling together. Let's watch bands together. Let's have fun and interact on different levels too. Because I love the people I've met through PPW, from the super fan to Boris McGuigan to NJ to all the favorite fans that I always see there. Let's yep. do some stuff together. Let's make memories and, and, and have fun together. Yeah, and you know, again, it's it, it's crazy for me too, because like even at the, I know we had come to a couple of shows, but it'd been almost twenty years since I had seen the guy, and a guy who used to, uh, I used to put on shows that his band performed in. He was the vocalist for a band called Tombstone Diaries back in the day. His name's Kalen. Uh, for a little while, he was actually drumming in a band that I was a part of called the Zenith Ablation. We did a couple of shows together uh, before we kind of called it a day, but. You know, I had known this guy for a little while back then. Hadn't seen him forever, but I guess he was at a couple of the PPW shows, but I hadn't seen him in so long that it, I didn't click in until he had messaged on social media. We got to chatting back and forth. Holy shit, that's who it is. And he comes to the last show and he goes, you remember me now? I'm like, man, I'm not going to forget now, dude. Like, it's as soon as yeah. I, it all came together and clicked finally. But it had been almost 20 years. Like, I'm like, shit, man. Yeah. Like, you know, it was 2005, 2006-ish when I last was doing work with this guy but yeah, yeah amazing yeah. artist too like he does a lot of good work too he's he kind of does his his style now is doing kind of if anybody's familiar with the soundtrack or background music for the show stranger things he kind of does that type of synth 80 synth kind of dark 80 synth pop type yeah. music and everything very creative i i enjoy it even though i like my my heavy stuff i really do appreciate some stuff like that as well too and i i really enjoy his work very neat, very neat. But that, yeah, that speaks to that community feeling we have running into people you haven't seen in 20 years. What is it that brings us together? A love of wrestling. I want to come and see the matches. Munson's working at the matches. Yeah, I know that guy. And now you end up chatting, rekindling a friendship from the past, talking about some stuff, and maybe that's getting the ideas going. Yeah, Just like us meeting NJ and me meeting Vassar and all the cool guys that come to wrestling and Boris and the creative minds and the people that want to don't just want to consume the product. They want to help. They want to joke around with the guys. They want to make videos and have some fun. And, and it, it's all part of coloring up what PPW is just adding that flavor, adding that local flavor that the, that the fans and the watchers and the people can can inject into the product and i mean you, you you have to think it's that way two months it is part of the fun of going to the show is the crowd like the oh, crowd yeah. is one of the characters in the whole show absolutely 
because they have a voice, they let it be heard. They have moods, they have feelings, they have alliances, they have people they don't like. And, and what a cast of characters, and we've seen all kinds of different uh, uh, regular fans throughout the year, for good and for better or for worse months. And we can list a few people on both sides of that, but much more for the better. And I love halftime, as I like to call it, in the intermission at wrestling because you get to just make the rounds a little bit, just go around and say hi. Lots of handshakes, lots of cheers, lots of good feelings. And, and it's it's awesome. One of the best parts is interacting with the PPW Nation by yeah. a long shot. And, and with our new ticketing system, last time out, I got to do a lot more communicating uh, through emails and stuff like that with and through uh, Facebook Messenger with a lot of the uh, fans this time around. Uh, so I got to know names uh, to faces that I didn't necessarily know who had yeah. been regulars at the show. Now I can put those names to those faces and recognize it. And it was cool, too, because at the door when I'm doing the scanning and stuff like that and people are like, oh, so you're the one I've been communicating with through Messenger. Or you're the one I've been communicating through email with. I'm like, yeah, that's been me the whole time and everything. And or some people have been communicating back and forth. There's been times when there's been people who didn't know they had been communicating with me back and forth for a while on social media through Prairie Pro Wrestling. And then all of a sudden they find out, and oh, that's you who I've been talking to this whole time. They're like, yeah. you weren't sure. And I'm like, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to come out every time. Oh, it's Bobby Munson. Like, you know, it's, you know, you got a PPW question. I'm going to answer your PPW question. You should get one of those name tags, Munson, that says, hello, my name is, and then you just write Munson. <laughs> Hello, my name is Munson. I like it. <laughs> I can, can I have a, the, a Primus type theme song that goes along with that too? It said, "My name is Mud." And my name is Munson. <laughs> and that's funny that that that's almost become your official name in wrestling because I was when when uh, you were the face commentator and I was the heel. I always wanted to call you by your last name, like like yep. Jesse Ventura would. That's totally where that came from. And that's all Al Asasino ever calls me either. Well, I mean, yeah. there's some other words he calls me, but I mean, in terms of my actual in my yeah. name, he actually only calls me Munson. Uh, so yeah. I, yeah. I'm kind of used to that from the heels. The heels like to refer to me as Munson. It's become a bit For of a sure. thing, point where a lot of the a lot of the new guys that have come around now. It's it's Munson. Although I got to say, there's ones like Cole Kelly. It's it's Bobby. When it comes to Cole Kelly, he calls me Bobby yeah. all day long. Kind of yeah, thing, so, which is very wonderful. respectful and friendly man he is. He sure is. But we could go on probably for hours about this, Papa Spokes, and I'm sure you know this ended up being a lot more, uh, a lot more fun than I even thought it was going to be because we didn't have, know what we were going to do. This was kind of a last minute decision, and this was this was a great episode. I really enjoyed myself tonight. I think so too, and it reminds me of um, again. Let's let's think of another memory here too. When you and I were first starting to do commentary together and starting to be friends with each other as well. Um, you and I used to record at in person at studio smokes and, and yep. we would go outside and have a puff sometime. And you remember some of the long conversations we had long, enthusiastic conversations. We were getting to know each other as guys, getting to know each other as wrestling fans and all that too. And uh, we, we, we always said that, Man, we should just record this because we just talked for two hours about wrestling, had some laughs, had some insights, had some hilarity going on. This is kind of what this episode reminds me of. Just yeah. two video bros talking about wrestling, keeping it loose. I love it. Yeah, and you know what? Maybe we don't have to theme every episode of Ring Respect Radio. Sometimes maybe just shooting the shit as bros is the best way to yeah. go and We'll do that every once in a while. We're going to keep, you know, again, moving forward. I think this show is going to be trip through the territories, which has been a massive success for us. Our conversations about indie wrestling with reviews of indie wrestling promotions, because those have been very successful. And then stuff like this, where we can shoot the shit. Will we be bringing back stuff like the Fuhrer's Choice Championship tournaments and uh, trivia nights? Eventually, eventually. But we're giving them some breathing room so that when we do yeah. bring them back, you guys are going to be more excited than ever. But get excited because this just cost me an arm and a leg. It's the Papa Smokes ticker. Papa Smokes, tell them where they can find you. All right, everybody. I can be found at Elon Musk's 
Free Speech Wonderland, also known as X, formerly known as Twitter. I am at Smokes underscore Papa. I can also be reached on Twitch at Papa underscore Smokes underscore. All right, that's where you can find Papa Smokes. As for myself, I am Bobby Munson. Over on the X, it's Real Bobby Munson on Instagram and Threads. You can find us at Video Bros SK and over on my personal Twitch, it's at Video Bro underscore Bobby Munson. Where can you find me outside of here? Well, you're going to be able to find me this weekend, this Sunday. It's Point of View, and it's a double whammy on Point of View this weekend. The first half is going to be myself and Mark Robson continuing our summer of Euro 2024 because England made it to the finals. Uh, we're going to be excited talking about that. They play this Sunday. And right after we talk about Euro 2024, Andre C is going to be hopping on, and we're going to be watching my official divorce from MLW as we watch MLW's Blood and Thunder before they un unofficial or officially uh whatever they cruelly start charging get this eleven dollars canadian a month and i checked this out because they said and all mlw content available all the live events blah 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 okay there are currently 20 videos available on this on this platform that you're paying 11 bucks a month for and then the the premium live events which quite frankly haven't been quite up to par in terms of an $11 a month fee. And then, okay, the pre-tapes kind of ticked me off on this one too because there's better matches on pre-tapes than on the main card once again. Just something that I'm really kind of getting a little tired of. So this will be my official goodbye for now to MLW because I'm not going to be investing that kind of money per month on something that, in my opinion, needs to get better. If I'm going to pay that kind of money per month and a lot less actually, I'm going to go get the Impact Wrestling uh, monthly monthly package that you can get there because I'm telling you, they're putting on a lot better show right now than what MLW is. Uh, aside from that, you can catch myself, Papa Smokes, every Saturday, Prairie Pro Wrestling. New matches coming at you every single afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Saskatchewan Time. And you are watching us right here on OLE Podcast. OLE Podcast over on the X, Instagram, and Threads. OLE Podcast as well. And then YouTube and Twitch are at our local establishment. Make sure if you're watching on replay, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and comment, comment, comment. Give us a thumbs up. It helps with that damn algorithm, and it gets us straight to the top. Stay tuned because coming up right now, we've got Auntie Collins and Kyle Sparks bringing you all the best in Ring of Honor with the Honor Ramble. That's going to be it for myself, Bob Smokes. We'll see you next Thursday. Take care, everybody.